Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to be explaining how the RGBA color channels work in both Nuke and Natron. The RGB channels are very straightforward, but obviously the most fundamental part of any sort of image. It's the color and what you see. The alpha channel is also very straightforward, but I'm going to go into one of its purposes for the merged operations, um, which is basically the process of pre-multiplication. So I'll go into that and uh, yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so as I said in the intro, the RGB channels make up any display that we see on any monitor or TV screen, such as this one or the one you're looking at right now. So they're basically made up of three color pixels, a red one, a green one, and a blue one, and added together they can create any sort of color that we perceive from a monitor. Um, so if you have a value of one in red, one in green, and one in blue, it'll equal white, whereas each color pixel are the same and you get a white image. That's very straightforward. You can see this happening if you drop some water on like a phone screen or something and the little droplet will make a, a little bubble which will magnify the pixels underneath. So you can see the line of blue LED lights, the line of green LED lights, and the line of red LED lights. One set of three of these makes up one pixel, and then another pixel, etc, etc. If it looks a little purple, it's just because the red and blue are bleeding into each other and that's how you make other colors, there's different combinations of these lights. And so when we talk about a color value, it's usually referring to one pixel and it's the value of that individual pixel. So for example, if I look here, the red, green and blue equals white in one pixel. Now it's important to note that it's not just a value of zero to one, it's not on and off, it's a floating point value. So if I hover the mouse over the screen and make a sample at zero point, 000, or in this case it's the green channel so it's 0 0.07227 so it's a, a gradient between 0 and 1 as you can see here like this. In, in softwares like Photoshop and After Effects it's a similar thing except it's a different color space and I think the color values range from 0 to 255 or something like that um, which is the same idea but it's a little um, less straightforward 0 to 1 and, and the, uh, the decimal places in between is, is quite simple. So in summary of the RGB channels, they are what make up pixels. So each one of the, every single pixel in this image here is made up of a combination of red, green, and blue to some form of a decimal, decimal place. And if I resample over the image, they're all made up of that. And it's the different combinations of those that make up color contrast and, well, pictures in general. So what about the alpha channel? What is its point? Now its primary function is the use in the merge operation. For example, if I take this as our background image and this is our CG rendered image and we want to put this over the top of this image here, we would do a merge operation which I'll explain properly later and we'd merge it over like that. Okay, but how does it know that this pixel should go over and this one shouldn't? They're right next to each other, how does it know? Well it uses the alpha channel to do that. So this is the alpha channel which is just a matte channel so it says these pixels show something, these pixels don't. The merge node does this by minusing the alpha channel from the RGB of the B pipe and then plusing the A pipe over the B pipe. And the way it treats edges, especially when there's softness or semi-transparent areas, uh, it does this process of pre-multiplication, which I'll explain right now. So it's our color channels multiplied by the alpha channel to give us the final pixel. And then the merge operation takes over which I'll get into in the next episode. So I can demonstrate how this works using this setup here. So if I go over here and I've got one in the red, one in the green, one in the blue, one in the alpha channel, so that would equal a pixel value of one. And it maintains one alpha channel over here as well. But if I was to change the alpha channel, not the RGB, the RGB stays the same, but I change the alpha channel. Let's say I make it half the value it is now by 0.5. So now you can see the alpha channel is gray it's less and so is the outputting image so now the alf so now the image is 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 because it's 1 times 0.5 equals 0.5 and we can do the same thing with the rgb channel if i make say for example the green channel 0 0.5 now this will start getting a color because the ratio of this of green to red and blue is different so we get a different value here so if i make blue 0 it's now nothing, it's a value of zero, and so we have no blue in the final result. 
and again and if the alpha channel is zero there will be no pixel value whatsoever so i hope this is making sense so far it's the color pixels the red green and blue together make a pixel and those get multiplied by the alpha channel in the process of pre-multiplication this does not happen for photographic plates that cover the whole screen or it can but it doesn't necessarily it's more of a thing for cg and overing operations how do we get the alpha channel well the alpha channel uh, is usually created by a CG renderer, like in this case, this is a CGI image, and it has a perfect alpha channel to match. The alpha channel can also be made with a rotor shape. For example, if I was to draw a shape around this uh, ship here, I'm just going to do a very crude example um, because I can't be bothered to rotor it out properly. And now, if I was to plug this in to this image here, now this has an alpha channel but it's unpre-multiplied, okay, because all the pixels that should be black are still colored. So if I was to pre-multiply this image here, I could make a pre-mult node, and that's doing that process that I just explained of RGB channels multiplied by the alpha channel. It's called pre-mult for short. And so now you can see it's cut out the pixels. So it's one, the alpha was one, so color channels multiplied by one equals no change. Color channels multiplied by zero equals zero. So now I can move this over like that, and I can merge it over like that. So that's why we would use the process of pre-multiplication. Now, CG renders come in pre-multiplied, so I don't have to put this pre-mult node under a CG image. So what makes an image pre-multiplied or not? Is it just the existence of an alpha channel, or is there some sort of flag that tells it that it's pre-multiplied? Um, neither. So an image can have a alpha channel and be either pre-multiplied or not, and there is no so sort of way to tell if it has been, other than does it work? And what I mean by that is, does the alpha channel work perfectly with the RGB channels? So if I was to merge this CG image over this background here, we get this result. And this is correctly pre-multiplied out of the render. And we can tell because if we look at some of the out of focus parts of the image here, where they've got a, it's got like a soft fall off, and we look at the image, we can see that the soft fall off is working perfectly. There's no sort of dark edge or bright edge. So if I was to double pre molt this, so add another one, so it's pre molted in the render and then I pre molted in the comp and then merge it, you can see this dark edge showing up here and I can exacerbate this further by doubling up the pre molt or tripling up the pre molt. So now you can see here it just keeps getting darker and darker and that's because we're multiplying the RGB channels by the alpha again and again and again. And because the alpha channel is less than one, it's getting the edges are getting darker and darker and darker but the RGB channels multiplied by the alpha channel of one stay the same. So it's because these values in the alpha are less than one, they get darker and darker. The same goes if I was to unpremolt it. So if I add an unpremolt node here, which is the reverse of a premolt, which is the uh, RGB divided by the alpha channel, and that is the unpremolt. And then we'll see that the edges of the X wing get very bright. And that's because we've taken this nicely pre-molted fallen off image and we've added values to the RGB here like this. So now it's incorrect, but the alpha channel is still faded off like this. So if we merge this over, you can see the bright edge coming in here and this obviously looks incorrect. So to fix it, we'd need to pre-molt it just like that. And now it works. Obviously we just don't need that phase. You would use this phase if you wanted to do some grade operations. For example, if, if I wanted to lift the image up like that, see how the blacks are coming up, um, we would need this step of un and re pre multiplication. See, if I disable these, sorry, my view is not loaded properly. So if I was to disable the un and re pre multiplication, the grade node will affect the plate that it goes over the top of as well. And that's because we're affecting the pixels here that we shouldn't be affecting. We're essentially taking the, the black pixels that shouldn't exist and we're making them above zero, i.e. giving them a color value. And so then when we merge them, that value gets plussed on top of the plate. But if we multiply that by zero, it goes away. 
but obviously we get that dark edge if we don't do the unpremalt. So we have to do the unpremalt, grade, and premalt. Only for some merge operations, specifically the ones that affect the black levels. But there is no harm in just doing an unpremalt and repremalt for every time you do a grade node. It won't matter, unless you don't have an alpha channel, in which case um, it'll yield no results. So you only need to do this if there is an a uh, pre-multiplied image and then there is no harm in doing it every time and you don't have to use these two nodes here and here it's actually built into the grade node right here so we could just tick that on and off and disable these two nodes plug it back in and we have the un and re pre-multiplied image here and turning off you can see the result that is incorrect turning it back on it fixes it so the, the grade node has this built in it's in nuke as well so that's pretty much the only way to tell if an image is pre-multiplied or not. It will just work. I mean, you can see kind of obviously, like if I zoom in here and I toggle, this is obviously pre-multiplied because the fall off in the RGB is the same as the fall off in the alpha. But for example, if I was just looking at this bit here, it might be harder to tell if it is or not pre-multiplied. It wouldn't really matter if this was our whole image and the alpha channel was only a straight one to a straight zero. Um, but if it changed frame or we move to a different area and you can see there is a fall off in the alpha so if we're looking at the pixel values as I move the mouse over you can see it's one here and then it starts to transition down to zero here so there's a gradient in here and that's where pre-multiplication becomes important so the next question might be is the alpha channel only used for this process of pre-multiplication and merging? And the answer to that would also be no. You can use the alpha channel for grade mats in the DI or in an editing software. So for example, in this simple comp operation here, I just delete this grade for now, you can see we're actually missing a shadow from the CG pass. So I could have embedded the, uh, the shadow map from this CG pass into the alpha channel of the plate. Because the plate doesn't need, if, if something's only having things merge over it, like a photographic plate, it doesn't actually need an alpha channel. Um, only the things going over the top do. So I happen to have a plate here where I have the shadow pass um, baked into the alpha channel. And so this is just a mat. So I can actually grade through this mat here a shadow to match vaguely this one here. It's not perfect, but um, it was a crude and quick example. So if I was to merge the X-Wing from this plate here to this plate here, now it has a shadow pass. So the alpha channel can be used to, um, for grade mats as well. And the way I did that was I plugged um, both the source in and the mask pipe into the input as well. And so I also ticked masks and used the color A as the mask. And so now it will only grade what is in this alpha channel. So when I merge it, now the X-Wing has kind of a shadow similar to the one that was in the plate. So that's how the RGB channels work, how the alpha channel gets involved, the process of pre-multiplication, and another use case for the alpha channel. One other thing to mention is in compositing, it's not uncommon for uh, images to have all sorts of other channels, like we're not limited to just the RGBA channels. You can have motion UV channels, you can have uh, the left and right channels for stereo, you can in Nuke you can make up any channel you want and just plug it in there. Um, as far as I can tell, Natron only has a couple of default channels available to it, which is the RGBA, the left and right for stereo, and the motion UV channels as well. As far as I know, you cannot add any other channels. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. But I hope this was a straightforward explanation of how that all works. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to be looking at the merge operation and how it exactly it uses the alpha channel to do a perfect merge operation. Thanks for watching and stick around for the next one. Cheers.